What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Have we rebuilt anything lately? No, not really. <laughs> auto <laughs> auction house rebuilds. Uh, auto auction, yeah, auto auction, auto auction house rebuilds, and and I don't know what we're doing with cars, man. Things have changed. I know a lot of you have realized that we haven't. We you when the channel first started, we actually bought wrecked cars, and we put them together. But I can't really. You know, this is what I hate about when you when you start becoming successful and you start becoming noticed on mm -hmm. YouTube, mm -hmm. is you get noticed by people you didn't know were watching, and before you know it, you're in trouble for things you didn't even know you could get in trouble for, and then you're told you can't do what you do anymore. See? And then you lawyers get it's it's such a. Yeah. I really I, sometimes I wish I'd been born in the fifties. <laughs> You know, I feel like things would have been so much simpler, easier, less regulation, less rules. Cars were easy to work on. Cars were easy to work on. They weren't reliable, but they were easy to work on. <laughs> what did a car get in the 50s? Like maybe 50,000 miles, probably not reliably, yep. but 50,000 and maybe with a new engine, 90? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. That, but for those of you that have been wondering, you know, what's going on with the rebuilds and salvage, you've noticed these things aren't coming. They're not happening. And all I can tell you is... I'm kind of fighting, trying to get back to that, but it's really difficult. Things have become really hard. And that's just the way it goes with YouTube, man. You know, you get trolls that watch your videos and they call and complain about you to the city and the state. That's how I lost my shop. That's how we got in trouble for doing salvaged cars and all that. It's just, you don't realize you're doing anything wrong. You're just making videos about doing something you enjoy that's fun for you, and then you find out you can be in legal trouble for it. So anyway, we got Monkey Wrench Mike back with us today. Then you get guys that are hanging onto your coattails trying to grab some subscribers yeah. like I am. Yeah, right here. these guys. Jeez, no shame, man. No, I do this because it's fun. <laughs> See, and that's why See? I do it. Yeah. I do it because it's fun. I love doing... Well, I don't love doing cars, but I love buying cars. I tried that once. It was a bad experience. I was really drunk. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't want to know about that. We'll back off. Yeah, okay. It was a sexy Acura. All right. It really was. <laughs> and I was a kid. I was too young to drink. And it was, it was alcohol as well. Don't drink, children. If you're a child, if you're underage out there, just never drink. Don't do alcohol. Don't do drugs. It's all bad for you and give you horrible experiences. You do stupid stuff. Don't do it. Um, Check out Monkey Wrench Mike on YouTube. <laughs> Story time. Yeah. <laughs> We're. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I got a picture of that car at the house. Not any. No, not any. No. This not. It's not a dirty picture. <laughs> it's the no, picture. It's just a picture of the side table by the bed. Is it? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I still. I still like to pull that picture out every once in a while. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we <laughs> getting way sidetracked here look what we got i promise you you know i shouldn't have done this car first it should have been the last one but because of the new layout of the lot it would be a huge pain to go do all the other cars and then come all the way back here so i'm going to give you probably the best car i think anyway maybe the best car of this video is probably right here 2004 honda s2000 i've never owned one i've always wanted one it is kind of sexy yeah, you better keep this car away from me because uh, <laughs> things about to get nasty. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm too old for that. I don't do that stuff anymore. Literally none of it. <laughs> um, it's a 2000 for S2000, and boy, she's sitting low in the front, man. Like the front is is it's got to have some coilovers. I'm guessing it's a rebuilt title. So at some point, this car was in an accident, and it got put back together. It doesn't look bad. Of course, I can't see the paint. So I don't really know what condition the paint's in. But, I mean, overall, the car looks pretty good. The stance is nice. I really like it. It says it's got 70,366 miles. The top is just, it's destroyed. This actually concerns me. Not, not because the top is worn out. It's just, if someone didn't take the time and the money to replace the top, and I'm, I'm going to admit, it's not cheap to replace a top. If you get it done professionally, this top's probably going to cost you like $2,500. That's a lot of money, but... It's one of those things where when it comes time to get it done, you do it. You know what I mean? You bite the bullet, you put the money, you do it. If somebody didn't care enough about it to worry about the top and cared even less about it, you'd be better off leaving it ripped than to, this is, what did you do to this poor car, man? And it makes it look trashy. And honestly, I don't really like those rims either. Mm -hmm. 
they i don't know they, they it, it, you know it's my luck whenever i say on video man i love those rims all my subscribers come back and say i hate those rims they're hideous they're ugly but i'm going to say these are I, I think these rims are ugly that's my opinion everybody's going to come back and say don't you know those are ten thousand dollar wheels randy yeah. i hope not i hope that's not i don't like the rims i don't like the rims i think it'll look better with stocks on it look at the exhaust is that that's not Oh man, that must be titanium. Burnt titanium <laughs> exhaust. Whoo! Oh, that's money right there is what that is. That's money. No, I don't know. Um overall though the car really does look nice, aside from the top, and that's not not a big deal. You put a top on it. This car books for well, clean title. Around fourteen five. Right now it's at twenty nine hundred dollars. We have not cheated we have not listened to it run we haven't checked the oil we haven't done anything we literally just walked up to it i want this one to be like a legit first impression is it not popping for you i don't know where it is I don't know. <laughs> I'm not ah there we go these fancy new cars you know what this car to me looks like a snake from the front yeah it really does i don't know why i get that like a viper or something not a dodge viper but to me it looks kind of like a viper man that engine is clean Look at that. Oh, they are coilovers, adjustable coilovers. You can stiffen them up and loosen them up. Look at that. Softer and harsher. What did you just find? No, same thing. I like that. Um, the air box is missing the cover, no big deal. But look at the engine. The engine is clean, uh, and that's, that's a big deal. The car may not look all that great, but the engine looks practically new. There's not a spot of oil to drop anywhere on it. This thing looks really nice. Maybe this will be the car I get this week. I'm looking for something, man. I got to do something different. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in it. Or maybe there is. Maybe it's just really low. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. When you, when, when you, when you do what I do and you buy all these $500 cars all the time and you really want to just step it up a little bit, it's nerve-wracking. Because you've never spent this kind of money before. You know, and the first time is... It, it, yeah. it's, it's a difficult pill to swallow because you're like, you know what, I could go buy three $500 cars and two of them will probably be good. Or I could spend all my money on one. And if it's bad, well, <laughs> content, I guess. I don't know, man. What's your most expensive car that you purchased? Do you remember? Most expensive car I purchased. Okay. You know what? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna die yeah. when I tell you. The most expensive car I ever purchased was a 2015 Chevy Sonic. Really? <laughs> From this lot right here. Right here. It was uh 4800 bo 4800 bucks. Wow. I didn't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was Hey, that I'll was... tell you what though. I made a profit on it. I did. I sold it made a profit because it was a it was a clean title. Mm -hmm. It was a bank repo from Indiana. They were living in the car here in Oklahoma. You OGs out there will remember that video. That was the the one we found the crack pipe in the in the back seat and <laughs> I put my fiance's butt as the thumbnail. It got views, man. It got views. Wow. Here you go. Get <laughs> there, yeah, there you go. That's your next one. This yeah. whole video has got a weird This vibe. video's gone so far <laughs> off track. It's, this is why everybody keeps wanting Monkey Wrench Mike to come back, though, because you never know what in the hell is going to yeah. happen when he's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, basically $5,000 for a... Uh, but it's clean title only had like 30,000 miles on it. Yeah. And the car itself was actually really clean and, and uh, it, it was a decent car. We made a little bit of a profit on it, not much. But yeah, ever since then, I've never spent that much money at Copart again. Yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with Copart, by the way. It's got nothing to do with Copart. Just, you know, looking at it now and seeing, I, I, for five grand, I could have done a lot better right. <laughs> than a right. Chevy Sonic. You know what I mean? Well, I say I like, this. I like this too. I really yeah. like this. Um, it's an automatic, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. They didn't make an S2000 in an automatic. These are stick shift only. Got a six speed. Yep. The oil is golden. Oil looks good. The coolant, I do believe it has coolant. It's just low. The brake fluid looks clean. These are things that tell me if the mileage is accurate or not. Yeah. You know, it says it's got 70,000 miles. You look at the brake fluid, I don't know how well you can see it. But the brake fluid is relatively clean. It's a little dark, which makes sense, but it's not black. So, yeah, I think this is probably a true 70,000 mile car. It just needs a little bit of love. It needs some rims. It needs some tires. It needs a top. You fit in there? Well, I fit in there. <laughs> you sound like my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> 
Need to lose weight, Randy. <laughs> oh man, this is a, it is a tight fit though. Oh wow, that shifter is solid. Really? Here, kill this. <laughs> oh, come on. It's dead. Really? It's, oh. it's dead. Huh. Man. Yeah, completely dead. Man, the trans feels real good. Really does. 70,000 miles, that's not much, I guess. Looks like it's got an electric roof. You got your uh, Alpine down here. Heater, air conditioning controls right here. Very basic, very simple. And I almost want to... Uh, or wait, no, 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 hold on. Maybe it does start. I, did, I thought this was a push to start, but it looks like you got to have the key in it, too. That's weird. I thought the point of push... To there we go. Okay. So why do you have push to start, then? Oh, you got to hold it? Whoa. Oh. oh, man. Smoke? <laughs> oh crap. What colors? Gunned it, it was black. Black smoke, so carbon running rich. Man, there's a lot of good golly. The amount of pressure coming out of that exhaust. It's back here, man. Wow. Good lord. Okay, I gotta admit, I like this little car. I, I do. I do. Now this car is somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 horsepower, which is pretty impressive from a four cylinder, but the torque is what's, the torque is kind of laughable on it. A yeah, tiny battery. It's got like 100 and, uh, 150, 180 foot pounds of torque, but 300 horsepower. So yeah. Man. This is a nice little ride. I really do like this. This roof is in horrible shape though, man. I mean, it's, uh, the roof is bad. The body looks good. The interior is pretty decent. I mean, it's a, it's, it shows a little bit of wear, but nothing, nothing too serious. Let's see if the, uh, Let's see if the windows work. This is the important window. That one works. What about that window? That works. And looks like, I don't know how these work. We got silicon coming through the, uh, oh, there we go. I guess it just, you push this in, push this down and that latches. So push this button, push this button. I guess we just push these back closed and then there's a roof button. There you go, it works. How about that? The new top. It needs a yeah, it needs a new top. We'll definitely have to put a new top on it. It's four to five hundred dollars. Just for the top. That's not bad. No. Put the windows back up. The AC work. Let's try it out. Well, the AC feels cold, but it's hard to say for sure whether it actually works or not. There we go. Yeah, AC is on. It's working. Yeah. And let's put it into gear real quick. Yep. Okay. Now let's try... Uh, Let's see, first, second, third, fourth. Got to get a feel for this one. There's sixth gear, and it tries to pull. It doesn't slip. Perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. So you got to turn the key on, and then you got to hold the uh, the push to start button. That's that's interesting. Okay. So tell me what you think.
I like it, but we'll have to find somebody that can do a top. I don't know anybody. So anybody in the Oklahoma City metro area, Moore, Norman, really Tulsa, I don't care, anywhere in Oklahoma, if you can do tops, holler at me because I'm, I'm very interested in this car. I actually really do like this. This is probably the best one we've looked at so far. I like that color. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful metallic silver. Yeah, I really like it. And the clutch is good. I had it in sixth gear and it was still trying to pull. So if the clutch was going to slip, it should have been slipping in sixth. Air conditioning works. No leaks that I can see. This could be a score. I think we're going to... I think we're going to bid on this. I think we may have just found the one we're going to bid on this week. Comment below. Tell me what you think of the 2004 Honda S2000. So right here, this is Mike's first car sitting out here at Co Park. Hey, you know what's crazy? I actually found one of my cars that I owned like 10, 12 years ago out here, maybe two or three months ago. Wow. And you, you, you couldn't miss it because I made sure that car, that car was very unique. It was a uh, like an 04 Dodge Neon, yeah. and it had a body kit. It had uh, it had custom headlights, custom taillights. It was a custom color. You would never see another one anywhere. So what I did is when I saw it, I knew it was mine. I mean, I knew we had won a lawsuit living in the trailer park. Actually, yeah. we won a lawsuit, and I went and bought a Dodge Neon with it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I knew it was mine, but I took the VIN number home with me, matched up to the pictures I still have of the car. The wow. same car yeah it. Uh, it was actually my car but it was it looked like a train ran over the back of it it yeah. it was a, it was a bad wreck but anyway <laughs> yeah it's crazy to come out here and actually see a car that you used to own you know sitting here so here we have a a lot of memories like hey we won a thirty thousand dollar lawsuit we're gonna go buy two dodge neons one for me and one for the wife because <laughs> that's what you do <laughs> I wasn't so good with money, but I'm still not all that great with money, I guess. <laughs> anyway, 91 Mustang. This is a GT, right? LX. Oh. Even worse. LX. Yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> now, they actually did make 5.0 LXs. They did? I've seen them, but yeah. this... Man, this thing, it's crazy. This car's in bad shape. Yeah. This car was road hard and put away wet. That's what my grandpa would have said. I like the... Uh... Well, wait a minute. This has got the cutouts for uh, for dual. Okay, I we're we're. No, no, there, there's nothing coming out. There's nothing. Maybe they chopped the mufflers. I think Honestly, I don't know. I was I, at first glance, I just I figured this was a four cylinder, but it actually looks like it might be the V8. This is a V8. This is going to go on the list too because I can't help but love. Oh, we I don't think we can even. Uh, well, it looks like somebody has had this off. We'll just put that back. I'll put that back. But I've got to. Uh, Where's the daggum hood release? There it is. Wait, no, that's that's the fuse box. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I don't know what I'm grabbing at here. No, that's definitely. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm grabbing. It's got wires. Oh. Wait, there it is. Aha! Got it. How's the interior look? I can't really. Uh, can you guys see in there? I can't really see. From what I can see on camera, the interior doesn't look all that bad. Oh man, look at that V8. Look at that. oh, that's a big block. What is that, like a 490? Mm. <laughs> Mine was a 1980 <laughs> four cylinder turbo that left me stranded in 1981 all the time. <laughs> and I would actually get frost on the valve car. Oh, wow. And it left me stranded one time and I almost got abducted between here and Stillwater. Seriously? <laughs> never, you almost got abducted? The story. Yeah, a weird guy in a van with a big black dog. I, it left me stranded on I-35. I was trying to walk up to use the phone because there was a, a gas station, a little a rest station yeah. between here and there. And he pulled over, slid the door back. Hey, how are you? And I said, I'm just trying to get to the phone. And he said, I'll give you a ride. Come in here with my dog. And I was like, no, I'm fine. And he said, get in here with my dog. And he kind of acted like he was going to grab me. So I took off running. Oh. He gets in the van, pulls ahead of me on the highway. And so as I'm coming, as I start walking up to the rest stop where the phone is, he's parked right there. Like this. With Thumbnail for the video. Right, right here. Yeah. That's. <laughs> Come here. How old were Come you? Come here. 
I was 18. Oh, man. Just graduated high school. Yep. Oh, man. Yep. Freaked out. Yeah, he wanted me. And, um, <laughs> I had a guy so, that did something similar to me, too, <laughs> and it did involve a van as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I was what like was 13. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. I, I, I had some traumatic experiences. Ooh. At 13 years old, I left home. Yeah. And I went out and found my way in the world. And let me tell you, any of you kids out there, any of you parents that got teenagers that know everything, and uh, look, I, I had a bad life at home. I'm not going to try to make that any better uh, than it was. It was a real bad, very abusive life. And I thought I'd be better off on my own. But um, going off on your own at 13, whether you're a boy or girl, doesn't matter. <laughs> Men don't care, okay? Let me tell you. They just see 13 years old. Doesn't matter if you're a boy. Doesn't matter if you're a girl. You're 13. For some reason, it's what gets these people's uh, jollies or whatever. So it's, uh, it's a rough life. You don't want to go out on your own as a teenager. Take my word for it. Bad things happen yeah. to, uh, to kids. What does this tell you about the car when it, you get your oil it, funnel? It, and that's automatic transmission, transmission fluid. fluid so we know that it needs regular <laughs> transmission fluid <laughs> that that tells you everything you know for sure let's check the transmission i'm kidding we're checking the oil first is this a run and drive it says not in system i don't know oh. what that means okay you want to wait? well the oil actually looks pretty good it's dark but the oil looks good so I guess we need to check the uh, check the trans dipstick, which typically would be on the other side. It says front end damage. Is it a donation? I'm guessing. Uh, Does it have a D next to the very the picture? Uh, no. Really? Well, then why is this thing? Well, that means it runs and drives, so it's not a donation. I wonder what it's doing here. Well, I would guess the fluid looks, yeah, yeah. I was gonna guess the fluid looks really good <laughs> because- You keep putting new fluid in. <laughs> yeah, you, you get like a free transmission flush all the time. You just spew it out down the highway on all the cars behind you. It's kind of an ingenious idea, actually. Everybody should cause a slight oil leak, slight transmission leak, slight power steering leak. So you just dump it all over the ground. You put new fluids in every week or two and your cars would last, honestly, your cars would last forever because they'd always have fresh fluid. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, don't worry, I'm gonna wipe this off. I have a rag, I'm gonna get that off the paint. Not that I think it's gonna hurt this car any, but uh, not, I'm not gonna leave that on there because I already know I'm gonna get a million comments. I can't believe you left transmission fluid on the paint, Randy. Uh, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna steer clear of this one, guys. This almost looks like an insurance car, honestly, because it's got the numbers uh, on the tires for the tread depth. 8.30 seconds, 8.30 seconds. Usually that's insurance companies that do that when a car has been in an accident. They want to figure out if you neglected the maintenance and if bald tires was the cause of the accident. So it's got to be an insurance car. And the only damage really is a corner light and the hood. But, you know, this is one of those cars, guys. When it gets to this age, a, a dent is that that's enough to total your car. You know what I mean? They probably looked at this car and said it's worth 500 bucks. I don't know what the top looks like. The car overall really, it's not horrible, but you know, damn it. I tried to, I tried not to do that. Um, excuse me. <laughs> it's not, it's not horrible, but seriously, it's a 2.3 liter four banger old, pretty well beat up Mustang. So we're gonna walk away from this one. Let's go find something else to look at. Here we got a 2017 Mercedes-Benz C300 4Matic. I love this car. Every time I go to Washington or Oregon, this is what I prefer to get if I can get it from the same guy. I really like the guy I rent from on Toro. This thing handles great. It runs great. It drives great. It's got just the perfect balance of everything. It's not insanely powerful, but it doesn't have to be. It's classy, it's stylish, it's quick enough, it feels good, it handles good. It's really a great car all around. And it's probably my favorite Mercedes that I've ever driven to date. I don't know if we can get in here or not, but I'm hoping, no, we don't have parts. I was hoping we had some, uh, you know, like a headlight, because <laughs> that stuff's not cheap. I was hoping there was a, a headlight assembly in here somewhere. We got the door panel. I mean, that's a good thing, but it looks like the driver's side headlight's gone. The bumper's gone, which it was probably trash. It's definitely got damage down the side. They even told you how long it's going to take to fix it. 12 hours right there. 
so I wouldn't worry about that this door I would say needs replaced this door needs replaced so you're gonna need two doors you're gonna need the fender you're gonna need the bumper and we're just getting started uh, the grill, the headlight, fender liners, associated clips, nuts and bolts, because this does not come with it. This has been pushed in a tad. I'm going to say, for me, I wouldn't fix that. I would take a hammer and bend it back out and call it a day. But down here, let's see if I can get the, see if I can get the GoPro in here for you guys. The, uh, you can see the CV axle is actually rubbing against the strut. The strut is bent pretty good down there. The control arm right there. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys. I believe you can't see it way down here. I don't think I can get you in there. That's bent. The lower control arm is bent. Let's see if we can pop the hood. Maybe not. It's fun opening this because they took all the door panels and everything off here for this side. Let's see if we can pop the hood and take a look. I mean, it's only got 16,000 miles. Fixing this yourself, you know, you can find the parts used on eBay or uh, carpart.com or something. It's still going to cost a pretty penny for everything you're going to need, but, I mean, it can be done, and it can be done a whole lot cheaper than you're going to be able to go and find one of these, uh, you know, clean title. Nobody's going to know that it's damaged but you. You know, in like your wife or whatever, you know, you don't have to tell anybody else that this is a rebuilt title car. Once you get the fender, the doors, the headlight, the bumper, the grill, fix the suspension on this side, you've got yourself a very low mileage, fairly new. You're going to look like you're balling in a brand new Mercedes. Heck, you could tell people it's a 2018. Nobody's going to know the difference. You know, they're going to think you are just balling. You got money and only you will know that you went to the junkyard and found all the silver parts to match it for, you know, $2,500. So suspension's definitely gonna need some work. You gotta fix that suspension. Not bad though, man. Like I would take something like this over a total wreck, you know, completely smashed front end or back end or frame issue. Like this, this is you. It, this is about as honest of a car as you can get. You're looking at it and it tells you exactly what's wrong with it right here, man. It's what, what you see is what you get. This to me, is a great deal of a car we'll see what it goes for i think i'm still more interested in the uh <laughs> i think i'm still more interested in that honda that s 2000s really got my attention right now but this is don't worry this is on the list as well believe me this is on the list let's go ahead and uh shut it down and move on to the next one here's one i guarantee you haven't seen in a while an 87 toyota mr2 with the, they call it T-Bar. Uh, in America, we call them T-Tops. But you can call it whatever you want, really, because on this car, it's it's now a... Hard top. It, and, and they silicon over the windows of the doors, too. There's silicon all over. The back windows are gone. So these wing windows right here, they put uh, duct tape on and then siliconed over the duct tape. Wow. And... Then they siliconed, I mean heavy, there's so, so much silicon, so much silicon, my goodness. They siliconed over the windows. Um, does it work? Yeah, it works. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh, and is this an, is this an automatic? No. Oh. What? Oh, okay, that scared me. Oh, man. Oh, that sucks. Oh, it's been doing this a while, I guess. It's got permanent marks down the back end from that door opening and closing against it. I guess it'd be better to just leave it kind of sitting open because it's just going to keep smashing on it. So there it is. The engine is right here. It's a mid-engine car. Oh, wow. That thing is in bad shape. Didn't they make these in a supercharger as well? Or turbo? I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember either. You're going back a few years with this one. Yeah, you guys will have to comment below and tell me, tell us. I'm pretty sure they made this with a with a with either a super or most likely back then, I guess, a turbocharger. Now, this car is listed as a run and drive with 212,000 miles. 
The best thing you can do for this car is cut the top off. The whole, just the whole thing. It's 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 in bad shape. The whole car really is in pretty bad shape. We'll we'll try to fire it up though. I'll see if I can do that for you. That's uh. Let's see. Um. Uh. Is your foot on the clutch? <laughs> well, the key won't even turn. He won't do anything. Ah, oh, I was really hoping we could, uh, oh, look at, oh, I bet this thing is super fast. <laughs> uh, come on now. Well, I'm betting the battery's dead anyway. Yeah, nothing's. Nothing's coming on. Well, I tried, ladies and gentlemen. There's no more I can do. I guess that means we're not picking up the $500 MR2, so Yay! we're gonna have a... <laughs> we need your sound effect in there. Yay! Yeah. Moving on. You guys know what this is, right? An O2 Jaguar XKR. Not the XK8, the XKR. This is the supercharged version. This thing, even by today's standards, would still be considered a fast car. The problem is this one doesn't run. I don't think this one's running. <laughs> I don't think this is running a very long time. <laughs> Let's go say that. It's a Copart dealer services car. Um, it is listed as a no run. It is just... So you can see it was in an accident over here. The wheel has grass and straw in the rim stuck between the rim and the tire it's beat up on this side so it looks like somebody lost control and this poor thing just uh it went spinning <laughs> it went spinning and it looks like what finally stopped it from spinning was whatever whatever hit it right here it, just like the sooner scooter remember it oh it's too soon to make jokes about that now <laughs> i can make jokes because i'm a cowboy <laughs> Yeah, you know, I didn't even see that until like two days after it happened. I'm not really into sports or anything, but it was on Facebook. It popped up and I saw the car tip over. The poor girl was flying out of it and I was like, oh. And then you got that PETA company or whoever those people are going, oh, you kiss, don't use ants. Like, mm -hmm. take that back to California. Mm -hmm. All right, take it back to one of the coasts because we don't, we don't do that here. All right, we still eat cattle. Yes. Get out of here. No offense to those of you that don't. I got respect for people that eat whatever they want within reason i'm not i have no respect for cannibals if you're a cannibal i do not respect <laughs> you got to be careful what you say you say i respect everybody that eats whatever they want and then you're like oh so you respect people that kill people and eat them for oh come on now get rid whoa hello yeah <clears throat> well how many miles i i bet you don't have an odometer on this one <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think this thing has had a key turned on in it in a long long time. You know I was actually thinking about becoming a vegetarian the other day. Or not maybe not vegetarian like vegan. Yeah. Yeah, it's really I saw a Facebook. I hate Facebook and the stupid videos they make you watch. They use subliminal messages or something to trap you trap you into clicking on the video and i watched a mcdonald's video about chicken nuggets not the one of the slime this was different this was about the live chickens and how oh, okay. they're overfed and they're fed all these growth hormones so that by like seven weeks uh -huh. they're bigger than they're 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 like 600 times their original size <laughs> they're ready to harvest the meat at seven weeks old wow so imagine I used to go to the swap meet and pick up the baby chickens, you know, and oh, cute little, how old are they? Oh, they're four weeks old. Well, McDonald's has these suckers, like giant blubbering chickens. They can't walk, they can't move, they don't have any daylight. They just lay there and wait to be harvested. And, and it's the chicken nuggets. It's the chicken nuggets. Yeah, yeah, it's no joke. There, there's a big movement going on to change it. A lot of uh, companies have voluntarily signed up to treat the animals more humanely, but McDonald's has refused. <laughs> Ronald McDonald, you're an asshole. <laughs> I, hope my, I hope my pet duck doesn't hear this video right here. Yeah. Ah, quacky. Quacky. 
Yeah, I saw that and it got me thinking about food in general. You know, it's like, man, I love meat though. Like, I, I love steak. I, I love cattle. I, I, I love going down to, you know, where Mears is. Uh, you get the Mears Burger down in uh, Medicine Park. Okay. Oh yeah. man, they get, they serve. It's an old, old like it looks like a place from 1800s. Lemonade, mm. you know, uh, steak burgers. Oh man, Black Angus that they freshly harvest from the yard yeah. <laughs> you know i mean it's as fresh as you're gonna get it they almost <laughs> slaughter it when you order your plate but i got to thinking i was like man i'm getting it's i don't know what this age thing is weird because it makes me consider should i really be killing animals to eat them i can eat veggie burgers mm -hmm. <coughs> have, you, have you tried the, the, the mcwhopper that's fake i have okay i did i tried the beyond beyond meat burger which is one of them's carl's jr mm -hmm. and the other one was was a burger king oh. And I tried both of them, and, and honestly, the Burger King one, and the Carl's Jr. too, I, it fooled me. Huh. I, I literally, I, I'm not even kidding, I could not taste the difference. <laughs> and it freaked me out because I know that I'm eating something I don't want to eat, which is vegetables. <laughs> I, 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 but but it, it really, it tasted that close to me wow. that, that I was shocked. And then, yeah. you know, I went back and got a Whopper the next day. Yeah. <laughs> Because I know that's real meat, man. It, it's real controversial for me. Probably controversial for a lot of my viewers, too. Don't eat meat. Only eat meat. Real men eat meat. Real men don't slaughter animals. I don't know. Look, I'm a man, and, and sometimes I eat fake meat, and sometimes I eat real meat. I'm still trying to figure my life out. Yeah. Moving on. What kind of a guy drives this car? What kind of a guy drives a Jaguar? <laughs> I would say the type of guy, or gal, honestly, uh -huh. I would say the type of gal that drives this is a gal who either has too much money of her own or has a husband that has too much money. Same thing for a guy. He's either, he's either got a woman that's got too much money or he's got too much money. These are these are not reliable cars. In fact, I don't know of any Jag that anyone has ever said, now that is a reliable car. That you know, you go to Toyota for that or Honda. You don't go to you don't go to Jag. They're not they're when they run, they're great. They're actually phenomenal to drive. The the problem is they they just it's, why don't you have one? I have had. I've had No, have now. Oh, have now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to park it. Uh, so, yeah. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get to get into Jaguar. Yeah. I'm gonna buy that Lexus that doesn't run. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't know why I'm even recording this one. I, I for some reason when I was going through it through the list and, and marking down I actually had more cars because of the way they've organized the lot now, yeah. there's more cars that are accessible. Before, a lot of the cars were off-limits in off-limit areas. Yeah. Because of how they've arranged it, now you have access to more vehicles that I can film and that you can look at. So, I had so many cars, it was hard to pick from. And for some reason, this is a buy it now, I think, isn't it? For like 20... 2250. 2250. Okay. But the thing is, though, it says it doesn't run. Oh, okay. And... I don't really know. What's this got under the hood? Is it a 4.4.6? Surely not. It's probably 5.4. I'm not much of a of a Ford Lincoln guy. I don't know. Oh, right here, somewhere. There you go. Well, that's a bizarre looking. Oh, and of course it's. Oh, there's no battery, so. Yeah, that that would cause it to not run. This, I don't know what engine's in this. I would guess it's like a 5.4. I don't see the emissions label either. Oh, it's over there. 5.4. Mm -hmm. And this is an O2. So this is a two valve still? Crap, I don't know. The two valves aren't bad. The two valve five fours are good motors, but the three valve five fours you don't want to mess with. This one has not been run a long time. There are spider webs, and obviously no batteries. A sure sign. It looks, it looks nice though. I wonder if it has any mileage on it or anything. I'm gonna let it close. I'm not overly interested. It's also got a tow-away sticker on it, or it used to, from being so it was parked somewhere for a while. I've had some people get on my videos, and I tend to run away from the ones that have. Those are just usually, there's something severely wrong, and it was left somewhere. Like and it I, broke down on the road and yeah, just left it? Yeah. I've had people tell me, those are the ones you should be buying. You should be getting that. It most likely means that somebody fixed it and then sent it to auction. 
<laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm like, no, that's not what that means. If it's got a tow-away sticker on it, that means it was broke and yeah. it got towed away. That's most likely the scenario. It does have a little, uh, little damage back here, but honestly, not bad. The body's in, it, it, it's in pretty good shape, but I'd bet money we, we're looking at an engine or a transmission issue. Well, apparently it had mileage, so they were able to put a booster pack on it and get some mileage. 143,000 miles. That's not a lot, especially for a, if this is the two valve Triton, that's not bad at all. Oh, huh, I grabbed the key. I, I was about to put the key in it. We're not, should I edit that out? I, I, <laughs> hey, it's no battery. That's why we're, you know, it's not gonna run. Hey, I'm gonna put the key in it and see if we can start this for you guys. It's got a set of Michelins. That's another thing I look for too, is the tires. You know, if, if you see a set of Michelins, and I, I'll be the first to say, I don't have anything against Michelin, but I don't, I don't, I don't think they're worth the money, honestly. <laughs> oh, they That's definitely got some lots of rust bubbling up under here. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Michelin's are worth the money. I, I, I don't. Now I'm sure people will disagree, and some will agree with me. But when I see something like this, I see a vehicle's got a set of Michelin's. I know somebody spent, if they didn't spare the expense on the tires, they probably didn't spare any expense on keeping the oil change. You know, the things that are, yeah. that are needed. Last new tires I bought were Ling Long tires. Have you heard of those? <laughs> Ling Long, I have. The Chinese. <laughs> Ling Long, love you, long time. <laughs> you don't drive on those, do you? It's from my old car. I just something that wouldn't go flat. Ling, Ling, Ling Longs. I got them at a used tire place, but yet they were new tires. So I don't know. Maybe the used tire place got them cheap on Amazon or something from China, had them imported, and looking for an idiot like me to uh, I've charged you for some Ling Longs. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I don't need any Ling Longs in my life. I'm I'm cool on that. All right, I guess that's that's it for the the Lincoln. Thank God it doesn't have any Ling Longs on it. Here we got a 2006 BMW Z4. This car was actually here had it's been a year it's been a year or so ago. My buddy TK from TK's Garage was out here visiting, and we actually looked at this car, and he was trying to win it, and uh, I guess they just couldn't, they wouldn't accept his offer. I think he was trying to get it for like 4,500, and they just wouldn't do it. So they took the car back, and it looks like they took the car back, and it just sat for the last year, and here it is again, a year later. It's got damage all across the side here. It wasn't like this last time it was here. So I'm assuming wherever they parked it, um, when they took it back to their lot or whatever, it just dinged the living crap out. Look, there's a, I didn't see this, but there's creases just all over the door. I mean, that door looks like it has been, you probably can't see that in video, but that door just looks like it has been hammered, man. Ooh. Overall, I mean, it's still a decent looking car, but you know, if it wouldn't bring 4,500 last year, it's not gonna bring 4,500 this year. You know, I don't know if the car lot realizes this, but as they get older, they depreciate. <laughs> and, and what's worse is it hasn't been driven in the last year. You can actually see the old Copart writing is still on here, 46667 from a year ago. Today it has 46684. So you're talking like 20 miles in a year. That tells me there's something, there's something wrong with it. And the paint is just scratched everywhere. So many scratches, this poor car. Um, last time it was here, where is the dang? I thought it's, I always think it's in the grill. Yeah, it's right up here. There. So last time this car was here, if I remember correctly, it was listed as mechanical damage and I don't think it would start. Now it's listed as a run and drive. So I don't know if sometime during the past year they got around to fixing it. I think that may be a little <laughs> unlikely, um, considering it's only been driven 20 miles. It went up in value, and the engine fixed itself. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm not sure. I do know that it won't start. I was hoping we could get in and fire it up, because it is listed as a run and drive, and we couldn't get it to start last time. So I really wanted to start it up for you guys. But you turn the key on, all kinds of stuff happens, 
it says 46,684 miles and then just the battery's toast. And it, I mean, it is an automatic, so it's not such a big deal. It's not a horrible loss in my opinion because it is an automatic. The seats are in pretty good shape. Uh, the top is in excellent condition as well. I mean, if, if this thing went for maybe, I don't know, 3,000, this might be worth somebody. I mean, it's got 50,000 miles on it. You know, so I think for three grand, just because of how cosmetically challenged, I'll, I'll, I'll be polite and say cosmetically challenged this car is. I mean, it's just, it's got a lot of, uh, she's got a lot of flaws. These aftermarket wheels, it's missing the light over. It's got dings, dents, scratches everywhere. And most likely, I'm going to say this car does have some kind of mechanical failure. And it's probably a big one. You know, it's either got an issue with the engine or it's got an issue with the transmission. If you could get it for three grand, it may be something worth playing with in your spare time. Get yourself a little convertible, a little roadster to go cruising around. It's fall. You got that nice weather out here. Ah. This is black. Good eye. I can't believe I didn't catch that. So the car's been painted. So the car's right? been painted. Yeah. Maybe had down to. there on the bottom. Is that black or it's is black that too? Black. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It why was the painted. Blue doesn't go with this yeah. Weird it was. It was blue. painted. So. Yeah. I wonder what a Carfax would show on this. <laughs> that might be worth looking into. Yeah. I highly recommend a Carfax on any car. I mean, regardless. And I've got that deal with uh, Carfax for five bucks. You know, like four dollars and ninety-eight cents for a Carfax. So you really can't go wrong there. And if you're interested in the five-dollar Carfax, I've been doing this for, jeez, uh, two years. Yeah. Year and a half, two years. I've been doing these five-dollar Carfaxes. The link is in the description, guys. You really need to take a moment and go through the description box down below. And, and check the links because there's some good deals in there for you guys, man. You can save some money. You could save a lot of money. 25 bucks a Carfax, you can get it for $5. And they also have auto check. And I think it's about the same price, like $3 or something for an auto check. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth it. I'm going to say I, I'm not interested in this one. I, I'm still so far stuck on that Honda. Like, I can't get it out of my head. And the auction's tomorrow. So yeah. it's going to be hard to beat the Honda. But let's see what we got next. Last on our list, we got an old Chevy truck. I know you guys are seeing this and thinking we're going to do it again. I don't I don't think so, guys. Uh, that last GMC Sierra that we sold, what year is this? this? Is an 81? Wow, it's even older. An 81 Chevy C10. I I know it's like it's an oldie, it's a classic. You got to save it. And, you know, the other one was so much better than this. Even though the Sierra, well, it didn't run when I bought it either. Yeah, the uh, the GMC Sierra did not run when we bought it. We got it through the house, caught it on fire, and then it ran. It's all neat. A little bit of fire and fire extinguisher down the carburetor. You know, livened her right up. <laughs> That's all you got to do. When your car doesn't run, catch it on fire, spray the carburetor with a fire extinguisher, and I would almost guarantee you she will run great. This truck, honestly, the body's not bad. It's, I mean, okay. The the paint is bad. Lots of surface rust. I'm almost as old as this truck. Well, no, no, the truck is almost as old as I am. I was born in 80. And this is an 81, so she's close. She's close. That's my favorite part right there. Look at the, remember those? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh man, I don't think, I don't know if I got that on camera, but I hope I got that on. <laughs> he jumped out of his skin. <laughs> I think he's scared of Copart. <laughs> You're afraid a forklift is gonna drop something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now I know it says it's a non-runner, but I figure it doesn't hurt to put the key in and see if it'll do anything. Uh, we'll pop the hood. I think this has got, <laughs> I think this got a 5.0 in it. It's got a tape deck with a line input. Wow. So you can hook your uh, today's technology. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's about what I figured it'd be. So I wonder what the dash is usually destroyed. And actually, this dash is not as bad as the one that was in the other one. So the dash isn't too bad. The seat's in relatively good condition as well. There's no headliner. Uh, well, nope. I don't know if the hood's going to open at all. I'll try a... 
There we go. Man, it's got the oil pressure gauge, temperature gauge, voltage gauge. So it's got the gauge package. I think if she's not going to let me up under her hood, I ain't spending any more money on her. <laughs> nope. I am too old for this crap. I know better. <laughs> there was no innuendos or anything no, 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 involved with that. No. Yeah. Okay. She's not going to let us up under the hood, so we're going to walk away. That's the last one. That's it. Video's over. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this co-part walk around it's always fun when monkey wrench mike comes around Yay. you know when it's just me it's just like well here we got this guy. you know that guy dry clear eyes get clearasil or what the weirdest conversations <laughs> it's it's good and bad <laughs> <laughs> i have fun doing it i think he has fun doing it and hopefully you guys enjoy the it's kind of a it's not a new format but whenever he's around it really just livens the whole experience up i hope you guys like it and hey check out monkey wrench mike on youtube it's the least you could do for him coming out here to help entertain yeah okay he brings out the funny side of me where we talk about things probably shouldn't i should never mention on youtube or to any <laughs> other person but e either way it's fun it's entertaining i hope you guys like it if you do check out uh, monkey wrench mike give him a big thumbs up go find his latest video and thumbs up one of his videos and comment and say hey i'm here from randy's channel give him a subscribe please go check him out his links will be in the description i'm going to get out of here if you enjoyed the content give the video a thumbs up don't forget to follow me on facebook auto auction rebuilds instagram auto auction rebuilds and i guess with that hey share the video i can't I think i forgot that in the last one please share the video i have to say this in all the videos if you find it in your heart to share the video i truly appreciate it thank you all for watching stay safe out there I will catch you all very, very soon in the next one.